Do not ignore vehicle drive characteristics. Composing vehicle combinations that are only based on load capability and ignoring the vehicle's drive characteristics is a dangerous way to go. Late in 2020, the Swedish transport agency, STA, presented the inquiry that it had been ordered to do by the government in 2018. The assignment was limited to short tractors in vehicle combinations of 16.5 meters. A vision of zero accidents, which the SDA has declared, should be about so much more than that is at present neglected, and this will be shown here. Vehicle drive characteristics versus vehicle dynamics. What is meant by vehicle drive characteristics? Well, unlike vehicle dynamics, I want to shift the focus from the detailed description of vehicle dynamics to a driver perspective. Vehicle drive characteristics weigh more factors than the theoretical models succeed in demonstrating. In other words, vehicle drive characteristics are based more on reality. One cannot permit the vehicle industry and hauliers to control freely what is allowed to run on the roads. The former are mainly focused on the truck or tractor that they manufacture and less on the vehicle combination as a whole but which includes the truck or tractor. Furthermore, the car industry follows existing EU rules without questioning them. The Swedish hauliers, in turn, follow existing government rules and, of course, assume that they are safe. Poorly substantiated rules have created less suitable vehicle configurations that could compromise road safety. The result has been a development that is not the best. This development does not only concern Sweden. Since Sweden is a relatively sparsely populated country that relies on long transport distances for its raw material intensive industries, extensive experience has been gained in longer and heavier vehicles. Research has been ongoing since the 1950s with the aim of streamlining transport, research that is mainly supported by heavy industry. Over the past decade, this research has gained renewed growth by referring to the fact that more efficient transport benefits the environment. Several countries have caught on to the proposal known as EMS, the European Modeler System, which is basically a smartly conceived system. The problem with EMS is that the system is based on and can preserve a dangerous modeler approach using short tractors. The dynamic calculations carried out prior to approval ignore the erratic and variable friction that occurs in the coupling between the towing vehicle and the semi-trailer called the fifth wheel. Nor did the calculations endeavor to show alternatives to how this friction, sometimes sticking, could be overcome. As a result, we see today an increasing proportion of less safe vehicle combinations that are much longer than 16.5 meters on Swedish roads but which are based on short tractors. Development towards longer and heavier vehicle combinations must be introduced with the greatest possible safety mindset and must not be based on old transport policy heritage originating from the protection of the railways. The trend towards an increased proportion of vehicle combinations that are less suitable for Nordic road conditions is unfortunate, especially in winter. Of course, there are difficult winter roads condition in the rest of Europe but not as frequently as in the Nordic countries. In addition, the rest of Europe has a much denser population and hence more traffic and with necessary resources for road maintenance. Today, reliable statistics that could show differences in the risk for accidents between different types of vehicle combinations are lacking. Such statistics could form the basis for better driver training. The short tractor inquiry seems to mostly take the view that there are no statistics showing that short tractors are more crash prone than other types. What then differs between different types of vehicle combinations that make these more or less crash prone? Well, it's a driving dynamics, that is the handling of the vehicle. Short tractors are particularly vulnerable mainly when there are low friction road conditions, but they are also very sensitive to how the semi-trailer load is distributed. This is mentioned in another video. That is why short tractors are not addressed here, but instead other neglected vehicle structures that are very unfortunate and even dangerous from a driving dynamic point of view are mentioned. Overall, it can be said that the driving dynamics are most important at higher speeds. 
Crucial prerequisites are axle groups, the position and relative task of axles, whether fixed, co-tracking or four-steered. The road traffic regulations seem to be mostly focused on maneuverability to cope with junctions and roundabouts and less on driving dynamics. The obsession with maneuverability has led to fewer improved vehicle designs on the roads. Long semi-trailers have difficulty meeting the set maneuverability requirements if the axles are placed in a normally more road safe manner. The solution has been to build the semi-trailers with fixed axles under the center of the semi-trailer and at the back place one or two co-tracking axles. To reduce rearward amplification, there is a rule that axles positioned behind the middle of the semi-trailer must be locked at speeds above 40 km per hour. With a locking device used today, it has been shown that, for example, at motorway exits that turn into a curve before the speed has been reduced to 40 km per hour, the axle lock is subjected to such a strong lateral load that the axle does not open for tracking. With such a long distance between the first and last axles with all axles locked, it can easily be the case that the semi-trailer steers the tractor instead of the normal case, which is when the tractor driver is in charge of steering. The current rules should be changed as a matter of urgency to the fact that axles behind two-thirds of the length of the semi-trailer must be locked and axles in front of this point must not be locked or fixed at normal road speed. The limit of 40 km per hour should be increased to 60 km per hour unless a safer regulation of the axle locking is introduced so that it is able to open even under high lateral stress. One type of semi-trailer are machine trailers, which are often equipped with four steering of all axles. The steering is of a direct acting type where the steering movement is based on the influence of the tractor's fifth wheel. The driving dynamics of this type of construction risk being very precarious at higher speeds. Unless the design can be changed to lock rear axles at road speed, the type should be speed restricted. A real freak semi-trailer that brings together the unsuitability of axles in the middle and direct control of the rear axles by the influence of the tractor's fifth wheel is this. Reinforcement of the steering mechanism shows that the mechanical direct action without servo aid of the said steering mechanism result in significant torsion resistance for the tractor. Already in the 1970s VTI concluded that a similar design, although it was a trailer, was clearly unsuitable as regards driving dynamics. One might wonder why the Swedish Transport Agency does not use existing knowledge. The friction of the coupling joint between a tractor and a semi-trailer can be significant. When semi-trailers started to be used as trailers by connecting to a trailer with a fifth wheel, called a dolly, it was soon discovered, especially in winter, that the semi-trailer would not allow itself to be controlled by the dolly. Early on, the trailer designers and hauliers realized that something had to be done to eliminate the friction of the fifth wheel. All dollies were thereafter made with a fifth wheel mounted on top of a turntable fitted with ball bearings. This was done entirely on a voluntary basis without government involvement. It was in Sweden that this development began when other countries did not have the same conditions with vehicle lengths. Since the introduction of the EMS system, the possibility of using a semi-trailer as a trailer has increased enormously. An EU trailer can be coupled as a trailer after a truck and efficiency increases by about 50% compared to a standard combination. Soon the requirement became that a dolly must be equipped with a turntable and ball bearings and that the turntable must have an angular limitation of 20 degrees in each direction. The reason for this was that the fifth wheel could end up at 90 degrees relative to the longitudinal axis of the dolly, thereby breaking the dolly's drawbar attachment. The decision about the angle limitation seems to have been made on loose grounds and in addition, no follow-up seems to have been made. Had a follow-up been done, one would have seen that almost no fifth wheel stands straight after a short time of service. The result can be a dangerous imbalance in driving dynamics as the front of the semi-trailer is given different stability between the right and left sides of the combination. 
The fifth wheel is obliquely lopsided because, for example, at an exit from a smaller roundabout or T-junction where the limitation position of the turntable has been reached, the fifth wheel is forced to move in relation to the semi-trailer. When the combination returns to a straight course, the turntable works first because it has very little friction and an equally tight turn to reset the fifth wheel in the straight position does not happen. For these reasons, most dolly combinations run on our roads with asymmetric stability. If our regulatory authority behind the angle limitation of the turntable had only given it more thought, the angle limit would never have come about and instead ruled that the fifth wheel mounted on a ball bearing fitted turntable should be kept locked relative to the semi-trailer. There are insignificant forces on such a lock which is why no government issued design instructions are needed. However, for a lock fitted on a ball bearing turntable on a semi-trailer and intended to mechanically induce the steering of an axle, it is a completely different story where the force impact is considerable. Another consideration of why, from time to time, less suitable vehicles are allowed on our roads is exemplified by the following illustration. A development has arisen where the haulier no longer questions the road safety of a new design. He relies on current rules to meet safe driving dynamics and, of course, optimizes his new acquisitions according to these rules in order for him to optimize the economic side of his business. Where is the competence that ensures that the rules are designed according to the greatest possible safety consideration? The question is highly justified when one sees creations like this. In a newspaper interview, the owner said the trailer is very stable. Anyone who knows what a regular dolly with a wheelbase less than 1.5 meters can do in critical road conditions will be quite shocked. The SDA has reacted a little late and probably not according to road safety reasons, but rather answering to the comment by the road responsible authorities about increased road wear. The idea of more axles and an overall average lower axle load is bypassed and road wear increases. But who thinks about driving dynamics and road safety? While dealing with what a dolly can cause in the way of problems, I remind you of the Piala Mines 90 ton vehicle. We have seen that a four axle truck in front of a six axle trailer with only one steering axle at speeds above 40 km per hour did not go so well, especially due to the dominance of the trailer. The main reason for the crashes was that the three axle trailer dolly assumed command and steered the truck. Wise from the experience of someone with observational skills when a new organization took over the freight contract and new trucks were acquired, a change was made to five axle trucks with two steering front axles and trailers with only five axles. The total weight of the combination was reallocated to more weight for the truck and in this way a two axle dolly was sufficient. Trial and error. If one had thought a little further, one would also have understood that when driving empty on the return journey, the truck's second steering front axle should be free from contact with the roadway and then the new configuration would have been completely optimal. For grip on ice, Wheel loads must not be too low. Competent research is called for. The experience from vehicles in the ore business should arouse reflections among both hauliers and vehicle manufacturers. Today, it is almost exclusively the case that four axle trucks have only one steering axle at road speed. It seems that the turning radius is the only priority. No one seems to think about what happens if the driver is forced to make a quick evasive maneuver at high speed in the face of an accident situation. It will be even worse if the truck is a tower trailer with three fixed axles. The case is similar to the ore carrying vehicle with a three axle dolly. Fortunately, this type of trailer is forced to have a very long drawbar in order to utilize the optimal gross weight of the combination. The weight of the combination must be distributed over a certain length of road, the so-called bridge formula, but this forgiving factor still does not relieve the combination of crash risk. 
The crash on a vital bridge for through traffic on the E4 in the town of Södertälje in 2016 is an excellent example of what devastating effects an imbalance between the truck's coupling overhang and the trailer's distance from the hook to the center of the fifth wheel on the dolly constitutes. Here the rearward amplification was huge, especially as the trailer had a certain load. In the case of empty or lightly loaded trucks with a Scandinavian buggy, trucks are almost always driven with the last axle raised. Previously, before air suspension existed, the comfort for the driver improved and tire wear was reduced. Today, there is no reason to drive with the last axle raised unless there is a risk of slipping on a slope. This is especially important for short three axle tractors with a conventional Scandinavian buggy as a lifted last axle causes a reduced load on the front axle leading to poor steering response. Why is this not included in today's driver training? There are lobbying projects underway to allow longer and heavier vehicles. Finland is well ahead in this respect and already allows 34.5 meter long vehicle combinations, provided that the road network allows access with such combinations. Again, the focus is on accessibility while driving dynamics are forgotten or considered approved through simulation studies based on simplified reality descriptions. I am in favor of the development towards so-called HCT vehicles, but there must not be a compromise with road safety, which is the case today. In order to meet the EU's accessibility requirements with EMS combinations, all ideas based on a principle of self-steering boogies are being tried again. The experience of such solutions from the 1960s and 1970s seems to be completely forgotten. In Nordic winter road conditions they definitely do not work. The solution must be based on the thinking that Denby Transport Limited in the UK uses, that is speed adaptive steering. Hopefully adaptive even to the right road section. A computerized control system is therefore required. The only question is whether the electronics can be made sufficiently resistant to the harsh environment that prevails in winter with salt environment and snow sludge. All the warnings that one gets today on the instrument display saying, warning, intelligent security system is out of order, make the idea questionable. If this is not successful, all that remains is to adapt the infrastructure as has already begun in Finland. As a matter of course, regardless of longer vehicles, the Swedish standards for roundabouts adjacent to motorways exits and ramps should be adapted immediately to enable easier and safer passage for existing combinations and less obstruction of other traffic. Finally, the only factors taken into account today seem to be accessibility and environmental factors, whereas driving dynamics and road safety have been overlooked. An appeal. Do not ignore dynamic driving vehicle characteristics. Thank you for listening. Per Thompson, in cooperation with Johan Granlund. Members of Veta. Narrator, Oliver Broneke.